Welcome to Rob Schmidt tonight. Trump and Biden both in New York today on this rainy Thursday. The reasons why tell us an awful lot. Trump on Long Island attempting, attending, I should say, the wake of a young police officer, an NYPD cop who was shot and killed in Queens on Monday over nothing. Officer Jonathan Diller was approaching a parked car to ask the driver to move out of a bus lane. The passenger in that car shot him just below his vest. He was killed for nothing, and Trump spoke briefly as he left the wake today. What happened is such a sad, sad event, such a horrible thing, and it's happening all too often, and we're just not going to let it happen. We just can't 21 times arrest it, this thug. And uh, the person in the car with him was arrested many times. The Diller family will, you'll never be the same. You can never be the same. And we have to stop it. We have to stop it. We have to get back to law and order. We have to do a lot of things differently because this is not working. That's how a lot of people feel. The stain on society that shot Officer Diller is 34-year-old Guy Rivera, arrested 21 times, nine felonies including attempted murder, allowed to just terrorize this city endlessly, it seems. Rivera was shot and wounded by Officer Diller's partner. Sadly, he survived. And to give you just an idea of the level of human that we're talking about here, NYPD says doctors found a small knife in his rectum when they took him to the hospital. This guy is arrested so often, he kept a shiv inside of his bum for the protection that he needed for the next time he's going to jail. These are the people that our new lawless left-wing society is working vigorously to protect. Them and pretty much no one else. Last night we detailed a new trend, random attacks on young women in New York, something that has just exploded on social media in the last couple of weeks. These stories are suddenly everywhere. And they're being committed by the violent madmen that our woke DAs are now refusing to contain. I literally just got punched in the face by a homeless man. Like, literally walking to the gym. Seeing videos like that all over. Pummeling young women as they walk down the street. The good people of our society have been stripped of their quality of life. Shamed into accepting lawlessness by radical ideologues who have taken power in blue cities where conservatives have either fled or no longer even bother to vote. And the reason it doesn't stop, of course, goes all the way to the top. Our state leaders, California, New York, Illinois, haven't ended this because they've gotten really no pressure to, especially from above. Joe Biden sits back and watches as American quality of life is decimated. He could fix this with a series of phone calls, throw some political weight around. The message would be easily felt. The woke DAs would quickly be ousted by the governors. The Democrat populations in these cities, of course, would support it because almost everybody hates lawlessness. But at the end of the day, the president of the United States does absolutely nothing about this. Ask yourself why. Biden flew right past Officer Diller's wake today to come to Manhattan for a fundraiser with Obama and Bill Clinton tonight. Biden saw no need to go to Massapequa because he couldn't race bait off some violent felon being killed by police. No, this time, of course, it was the other way around. It appears old Joe couldn't even be bothered to call the officer's family. You mentioned that um, the president spoke to Mayor Adams. I wonder if he'd spoke to the family of the officer. So, uh, so I don't have any private communications to share uh, at this time. Our hearts go out, obviously, to the officer's family and the broader NYPD family. Hearts go out to the family. Empty words, as always. Standard issue response to a story they could not possibly care less about. So if you're wondering how a political party can do this to society the way they're doing this to our society and get away with it. Well, of course, the media is largely to blame. And when they cover crime, they typically sound like this. If you happen to be a frequent viewer of this program, you might be familiar with this chart. Uh, the picture it paints is about as clear as it gets. There was a record spike in violent crime under Donald Trump in 2020. Sh shoots up to the left there. There's been a consistent decline since President Joe Biden took office. The Bureau just released some more data. 
new data from 2023 indicating that, yes, there was indeed a massive drop in crime last year. It is indisputable the country is getting both safer and more prosperous in the last four years under President Biden. In the BS factory from Rachel Maddow's twin brother there. It shot up under Trump, he starts with. What he means to say, of course, is that they, the media and the Democrat Party, stirred up complete chaos before the 2020 election to destabilize the country and inspire the black vote to carry Joe Biden, a candidate that nobody really cared about and everybody thought was too old. Remember during COVID when the only activity that you were allowed to do in major cities was protest and riot? Why do you think that was? Then he claims a consistent decline under Joe Biden using a graph that makes the meager decline look far more dramatic than it really was. If you look to the left, you see the numbers. It's hardly anything at all. In truth, when you look at crime today compared to 2019 before George Floyd and all the chaos, it is dramatically higher and it is staying dramatically higher. And there's no question about that. Of all the American cities, San Francisco, of course, has been the one that's moved the furthest down the left's road to hell. And it's finally gotten so bad their uber liberal voting base is now waking up because it basically has to collapse before people actually wake up to the reality of the hell they've created. Politico is reporting San Francisco Democrats right now are locked in a race to the right. Think about that. Running for mayor of San Francisco and everyone is racing to the right, racing back to common sense. The current mayor, London Breed's major opponents, political reports, all share her moderate Democratic stripes, moderate in quotation marks, I would expect. They're engaging in games of one-upsmanship by launching conservative-sounding plans to increase law enforcement and force people into addiction treatment. Now, currently, the person with the best shot at becoming the next mayor is a guy named Mark Farrell, who wants to call up the National Guard indefinitely to patrol his city. So think about how crazy that is. In San Francisco, Democrats took one of the most beautiful cities in the world, once safe and clean and prosperous. It was a great town. And they destroyed it to the point where now a Democrat candidate is gaining the most traction by offering up a National Guard occupancy of the city he is running to control. That is crazy.